Hello procrastinators and welcome to another episode of Procrastinate Tech. I'm Zads and today I want to look at a piece of very old technology, the Game Boy Camera. Not the first but definitely one of the earliest examples of a digital camera and it plugs straight into your Game Boy Pocket or Game Boy. What I want to look at today is I want to look at getting off those images from the Game Boy camera and onto a modern computer, which is apparently fairly easy if you have something like the analog pocket. Before I do that, I want to get this Game Boy camera looking its best. A friend of mine, Stephen, was kind enough to lend me his Game Boy camera. So we're going to take extra special care of it and we're going to get it looking its best. Since this contains a whole bunch of fond memories belonging to Stephen's childhood, I thought I should take extra special care of it. And before we take off the battery, make sure that the entire memory contents is already deleted. This will help him learn a valuable lesson about not backing things up before he sends them to me, won't it? So we're gonna start with that and then we'll move on to getting images off the thing. Let's go. Alrighty, on to the teardown. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove four game bit screws on the back. These are a special bit that Nintendo loves to use on all of their hardware. Bits for this are usually available from most decent electronic stores and hardware stores such as JCAR or Bunnings. The ones I'm using are from iFixit. So let's remove those four screws. With those four screws removed, the front and back plastic separate nice and easily and reveal the PCB, which can be removed. The camera module will also slide out once the four screws are removed. You'll then want to disconnect the camera from the main PCB. It's just the purple cable and it can be done with a bit of force. Just be gentle because these connectors are old and you don't want to break this. Luckily, this one's not mine, so if I break it, meh. Sorry, Stephen. Once you've disconnected that, there's two screws holding the little plastic pivot point together. So you want to unscrew them. This time they're just Phillips heads. They are in there quite tight, so you'll need to use a little bit of force, but again, be gentle. These are all old plastics. Once you've unscrewed it, you can just give these plastics a bit of a twist and that will help them separate from each other. You can then use your game bit driver again to remove two screws from the back of the camera module, which will split that open and that'll also allow you to remove the camera itself and its PCB, as well as disconnect the other side of the purple cable, which you can then feed through the pivot mount. You can then also remove the white frame around the camera casing. Be gentle again because, as I said, plastics are brittle from this era. So be gentle, but you might need to use just a touch of force to get it to separate properly.
And there you have it. All the plastics are now separated and now you've got the PCB to work on. Given how old this cartridge is, it's probably going to be due for a battery soon. I'm actually quite surprised this one isn't already due for a battery because it is actually still saving photos. So I'm going to remove the existing battery, which will be a combination of a lot of heat and soldering braid just to get rid of all the existing solder and a lot of stuffing around. You might have a better technique for doing this. Just be careful. There are some little components next to one of the terminals that you obviously don't want to burn off. If you are doing this, you will need some special CR2025 batteries with the tabs. These are usually pretty plentiful on places like eBay. However, your quality may vary. I don't know how good these batteries are going to be. Unfortunately, there's no, I guess, legitimate supply for these sorts of batteries because they have those annoying little tabs on there. You might be able to find another way to put just the standard CR 2025 onto the PCB, but it will require a little bit of hacking around to get it working. Anyway, I've used some that I got off eBay from an Australian seller. Hopefully these ones will work fine. Let's get this on the board. Give the pads a bit of a clean just to make sure that they're nice and shiny. And I'll probably put a bit of solder on here. Now, I'm probably not using the best soldering iron for this because this one doesn't generate a lot of heat. And unfortunately, these pads do dissipate a lot of heat. So yeah, if you have a bigger soldering iron, that would probably be the preferred method here. Otherwise, I'm just gonna struggle on the way that I'm doing it. After a lot of effort, that damn battery is now in place. Hopefully this works. So I'm just gonna sort of snap fit it together and check that it actually boots up and saves images. Hang tight.
Oh, and would you look at that? It is saving images. Fantastic, at least we know this battery also works. Now that we know that the camera is working and it is saving files, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give the board a good scrub and clean. So I'm gonna use isopropanol alcohol to clean the board itself with some anti-static brushes. Then the connectors themselves that go into the cartridge slot, I'm going to use some deoxid just to first off clean them and then second off ensure that they remain protected. So this game can be used for many years to come. I'm also going to give the lens a bit of a clean. I'm just going to use a little Q-tip just to give it a clean, something nice and soft. I want to also give all the little details of the cartridge a good clean, so the Game Boy logo on the back for example. Lots of dirt caught up here, so I'm going to use a soft little brush to try and get as much of this out as possible. Once I've got that all out, I'm then going to give the cartridge casing a proper clean, just in some soapy water. Now this part is pretty time consuming because it is very hard to get those bits of dirt, especially the fine stuff, out of these fine little details. So this might take a while. Let's keep going. Let's get all the parts into a warm soapy bath to get cleaned up and then allow them to dry out for a while before we reassemble the cartridge. And on to reassembling the cartridge, get it all back together and hope it keeps working.
and it's reassembled. Fantastic. Now that the camera is looking its best, let's go on a bit of a photography expedition and get some photos on here. Alrighty, so now that the camera is back assembled and working, we should take a few photos with it. So I'm going to go outside and snap a few photos around the house. Awesome, now I've got some photos on the Game Boy camera. God, my bloody seven year old self would have been over the moon about seeing this. I even took the camera just on a bit of an expedition to the train station to grab a couple of photos of the train coming through, despite getting a lot of funny looks from other commuters. Anywho, now I've got these photos, how am I supposed to get them off here? Now that I've got some photos on here, how am I supposed to get them off the device, you say? Well, let me show you. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a save state. To do that, you need to press the analog button and the up button at the same time. This will dump the contents of RAM, as well as dumping, more importantly, the save RAM data from the cartridge. All this gets saved onto the SD card. Once you've done that, turn off the analog and then insert the SD card into your computer. You'll need an application called Pocket Sync, which I will link in the description. Once you've installed Pocket Sync and the SD card is in your computer, open up Pocket Sync and click on Connect to Pocket. You'll need to then guide it to the SD card that you use for your analog pocket. Go to Save States and then find the latest Game Boy Camera Save State. Click on the little camera icon on that save state and that will show you all of your pictures. From there you can choose one of the default palettes, Game Boy, Game Boy Player or Black and White. I prefer Black and White to be honest, so I'm going to use that. And then you have the option to export selected photos or export all. I'm going to choose export all and choose a folder to hide them in. Fantastic, now they're all exported and that's how you get them onto your computer. It's as simple as that. Well, at least it is if you have an analog pocket anyway. Sorry, I can't help you if you don't have an analog pocket. Now these images will be exported in their original dimensions, which is 128 by 112 pixels. Now you will notice that if you do put them into any modern day application, the scaling may look, make them look as ugly as hell. So one thing I might suggest is scaling these in another application like Photoshop. For the best results when scaling, first off, make sure you use a width and height that is directly divisible by the existing width and height and doesn't leave any remainder. And I would use resampling of nearest neighbor. This will give those nice hard blocky edges to those photos. Anything else might result in very sort of softened and ugly sort of photos.
Anywho, that's all that I have for you. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from it today. If you'd like to support the channel, of course, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, of course, hit the like button down below. If not, I will see you next time.